Okay, guys, uh, this one has a midpoint ream on sum. Uh, I know that for two reasons it says right there. And then for each rectangle, you can see that the middle of the, the left and the right hand sides uh, is what is being used to determine the height of the rectangle. Uh, okay, so um, let's, uh, let's set it up. <clears throat> okay, remember it's height times base. All right, very simple. And we're just gonna do this a bunch of times for each rectangle. We have four rectangles. Uh, but instead of saying height and base, we're gonna say F of X sub I. Uh, I should be like I asterisk because, um, well, I don't need to go into technicality. So let's just say it like that. And then times, um, not B, but uh, delta X. So we'll go delta X. Okay, so de delta X is the easy one. We wanna find that first. That's gonna be the change in X. Okay, so um, it's very clear that the change in X, delta X, is 1 in this scenario. Now, if you didn't know uh, what delta X was by looking at the graph, if it wasn't an easy one, what you do is you go lower bound minus the, I'm sorry, upper bound minus the lower bound, and then you divide it by the number of subdivisions that there are. So this would be 4 divided by 4, so it's clearly 1. Um, so the delta X is not going to be significant. The only thing that's going to be significant is this guy, because this is just one. So <clears throat> this is, um, let's find the X sub I, and this is uh, what's going to be different from the left and the right-hand Riemann sums, okay? For the left and the right re Riemann sums, all you have to do to find the X sub I is by take, is taking A, and A is your lower bound, and then you would add delta X I. Now the I represents how many delta X's you would add. And um, the delta X is, um, uh, you know, every time you add it, it takes you to the next X value. So if you were starting on the left or the right, um, like, we were, like if this was a left-hand ring one sum, we would start there, add delta X, then we would get two, add delta X, then we get three, uh, so on and so forth. And the I is what determines whether or not we add a delta X at the beginning. So um, <clears throat> anyways, for the midpoint room on some, we don't want to start at A because one is not going to get us to one of these uh, middle X's. Uh, now, I know you guys can see what the middle X's are. It's pretty simple. Um, it's right between these two, these integers. Okay, but, so how would you use the A though um, and the delta X to find that first X value. Um, what you would do is you would take the A and you would add half of delta X. So I'm gonna put that like that and then delta X I. So that's the only difference, it's the only thing you have to change when you're doing a midpoint Riemann sum versus a left or a right hand Riemann sum. So let's check it out, let's see how it works. Our A is gonna be one. And then our delta X is one, so we have one half. So you would add one half, which makes sense, right? We got 1.5. And then uh, we would just have I right here because delta X is one. So we simplify this a little more. It's 1.5 plus I. Whoa, pretty simple. Okay, uh, this is what you're going to be plugging in to the F of X. So now we're looking at what F of X is. And I'm going to plug it in so we have... Um, 1.5 plus I, raise that to the third power, divided by two. And uh, we don't even care about multiplying it times one. So this is it. This is what we would have to um, plug into our sigma notation. Now, another good question is, what is the I that we're going to start with? Well, we want I to be zero first. That way, we're going to get 1.5 as our X value that we're plugging into the function. Um, so we're gonna put zero there, and because we need four equal parts, we're gonna stop at three. So it's gonna go uh, zero, one, two, three, and that's gonna be um, the four X's that we, we need, the four rectangles. Okay, so let's look down uh, below, let's see what we got. Oh man, look, they didn't leave it <laughs> as a decimal. They, they put the, the, the 1.5 as a fraction. Uh, but that's it. That's what you have to do to find the sigma notation for a midpoint Riemann sum.